My name is Josh from JDM Right Hand Drive. We have the Lexus IS250 inside the garage up on the ramps and today we're going to be changing the oil. So what you're going to need is two five quart jugs of engine oil and it's 5W30 is what's recommended. I picked this up at Costco. It was only like 20 bucks and you're going to need a uh, Lexus or Toyota um, oil filter replacement. I had to reshoot this video because when I bought the oil and filters and everything, um, the filter at Walmart was the wrong model number. It was an A1, and that's what it shows in the machine, which I'll put up here on the screen. That is the wrong filter. You need an A3, and this is actually a little bit longer. So let's uh, get underneath the car here, and we'll drain the oil. I'll show you guys how to replace the filter, everything that's involved, you need a special tool, which I do have. This guy here, this has got the special uh, attachment to fit over the oil filter cap and remove it. And I ordered this on Amazon, I'll have a link down below in the description. I think it was like 35 bucks. So I called Lexus and they wanted $300 to do the oil change. And I was able to buy the oil. The filter which I picked up at Walmart or you can order it on Amazon is less than 10 bucks and the wrench. So me doing it myself including buying all the stuff is about $70 with tax. So not too bad compared to going to the dealership and paying 300 or I guess I would call it more like the stealership. So if you guys like saving money and DIY oil change working on your cars and stuff give this video a thumbs up. I don't have friends. I got family. So let's get underneath the car. So coming underneath the car, we're gonna have to remove this cover here to get access. So a couple of 10 mil bolts, you have three of them all the way around. So go ahead and get these loosened up. They're not even real, these are only like finger tight. Whoever did these last, didn't even tighten them down all the way. Okay, and we got our little trusty snap on light here. Let's bring this forward. So now you guys can see that is the oil filter cap. So that's where you need that specialty wrench. So we'll go ahead and twist that off. We got our adapter, and as you guys can see, it's just a half inch on the back. So I'm just gonna put a half inch socket wrench on here. All right, so let's get this up in here. Just trying to get it loose enough here so I can get the filter out. If you guys can hear that noise in the back, I've got a Honeywell heater out here in the garage because it's like less than 30 degrees outside. It's really cold. Well, heater, I will take it out to the garage with me quite a few times if I'm working on cars, getting underneath out here where it's cold and there's no heat out in the garage. And I'm trying to stay as warm as I can out here. But you can see this comes out pretty easy if you have the right tool. It feels like that's pretty much loose there. And this oil is pretty warm because I was just running the engine. Um, oil has about 7,000 miles on it. Looks like it's starting to get pretty dirty, but. All right, so there's your filter assembly right there. So taking a look at this, uh, this filter housing, you can see these bottom two wider gaps here. There's like little ridges. So you're gonna need to remove this O-ring and you wanna make sure you put the O-ring in the exact same spot, which is right here. That way you get a good seal. 
And let's go ahead and open up the gasket material. And I've got a little bit of fresh dab of oil on my fingers, so I'm going to rub this all the right way around this uh, O-ring just to make sure that when it's slipping into position against the housing on the car that it has some lubrication to help it slide so you don't tear that seal. And then we'll just put this right back down onto the filter housing. And there's our old filter. Take a second to kind of wipe out the inside of this filter housing just to try to get all the little bits of grime and stuff out of here. Okay, that's looking pretty cleaned up. Let's go ahead and slip the uh, oil filter in. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the oil filter out of the car real quick. I've got it up on the ramps and uh, we'll get it changed and get the video put back up online because um, I pulled it down because I was showing the wrong filter. Um, got other projects going on. It's like three weeks later. Um, bought myself a bigger crane because this one is too small to reach back to the center of the RB26. And I picked up myself a new three ton jack so I can get the car jacked up like super high. I've got another set of jack stands. I can get it underneath, get it propped up, and get the transmission dismounted and the engine up and out of the car. A1 that I pulled out, and that was, was, was recommended by Walmart. This is the A3, so you can see it's like about a half inch longer. So let's go ahead and stick it um, down in the filter assembly housing. There you go, so it's supposed to be a little long like that. And this only comes with the new rubber gasket seal, which goes here, or the old one came um, with the drain plug as well, um, which is not necessary for the IS-250. I will have a link in the description down below for the proper A3 filter. There's also an A5, which is the same length as the A3, but the A5 comes with the little plastic drain plug and the uh, extra O-ring seal that we, that we don't need for the IS-250. So I'll throw this in and then back to the video. Pulled out in the garage today, it's uh, like 35 degrees outside. I'm just out here in a sweatshirt with a beanie on, trying to stay warm. So I'm trying to get this done as quickly as possible. I've got the new O-ring on and it's important to have the proper length oil filter. Otherwise, if it was too short like the other one was, um, here I'll just show you guys real quick. Um, when it's too short like the old one, you end up with gaps where basically the oil is gonna be able to bypass the filter, Therefore, your oil filter is not really doing anything. So if you guys bought the A1, make sure you get either the A3 or the A5. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a minute to talk about my R32 GTR for you guys that follow the channel. If you guys are not used to watching this channel, um, just go ahead and skip ahead into the timeline of the next chapter and we'll get back into the oil change. Sorry, I haven't really made much content with the R32 GTR since I've got the bearing failure on the low bottom part of the engine. Engine has to be pulled. I just kind of lost motivation once I took the, uh, the camshafts and stuff out for the V-cam. And the whole thing with this car is before, before uh, August, so if you add up like a year of timeline right before the bearings failed at the race last summer, basically within a 12 month period I put around twenty to $22,000 into this car with the turbos, the V-cam, the clutch, the tuning, the injectors, the plenum, everything I did was like 20K into the car. And the thought of putting like around 15K into an engine right now just kind of kind of pisses me off. And with the uh, channel, R32 GTR and like Skyline, Nissan Skyline stuff, it's not a very big niche in the JDM car community. People that like to look at that content are older um, YouTube is definitely a younger audience um, market, so I'm going to most likely buy the 2022 WRX and I'm going to invest the money that I was going to rebuild the engine right now into the WRX because I think that's going to grab a much larger audience and it's going to help me grow my channel so the ROI or return on investment is going to be definitely more substantial than if I was to build the R32 engine and all those new people and 
new uh, audiences that are going to be coming to the channel will help pay for the engine costs on this. And the R32, RB26 engines, there's so many engines that have been rebuilt and everybody's posted that stuff on YouTube. It's just not going to be really anything that, that, that's that popular. But I will rebuild it. It's going to probably be, I don't know, six months to a year from now. I'm going to let it just kind of sit and chill. There's no rush. I own the car. It's paid for. I've had this car for five years. Having it sit for a year and allowing me to kind of just like mentally get prepared for all the money I'm going to end up having to spend on it is kind of where I'm at right now. So um, that's just kind of a little update on the R32 GTR. Let's uh, get back to the oil change. Let's go ahead and slip this back on. And if for any reason your Toyota um, like oil cover here gets damaged, you can order a new one. I think they're right around 30 to 40 bucks. I'll have a link on Amazon. And uh, once you get that kind of tightened down by hand, you can kind of snug it down using your wrench and just torque it down to the recommended factory service manual torque settings. Remove the oil fill, uh, the oil fill cap because that creates uh, basically an opening for the air to pass through. That way the oil can drain out a little bit quicker. Underneath the car in proximity to where you put the new oil filter in, if you come back just a little bit farther, you've got the whole bottom of your oil pan here and you got your drain plug on the far side. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack that free. We'll drain that, replug it, and fill up our oil and we're done. So that's a 14 mil plug here. There we go. Get our drain pan into position here. I'll just go ahead and twist this off. All right, that's been draining for a while now. Pretty much most of the oil's out, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put the plug back in. If you've got a crush washer, go ahead and use it. I don't have one and there wasn't one there. It wasn't leaking before, so I'm just gonna put it back how it was and tighten it down. I'm gonna go ahead and give everything a good wipe around the bottom to make sure I don't have any oil dripping on the driveway or in the garage. Same thing here, I'm just gonna use a little bit of a rag and just clean up that, that oil around this as well, get it all cleaned up so I've got no oil dripping anywhere. Fluid capacity is around 6.8 quarts. I'll put, actually I'm gonna put about six and a half in, I'll start the engine. We're gonna check underneath to make sure it's not leaking anywhere. And then we'll back the car down and then we'll check the dipstick once it's on a flat surface and we'll top it off as necessary. Okay, so I've got about six and a half quarts in here. I'm gonna go ahead and put the oil cap back on. I'm gonna start my engine and I wanna inspect underneath for any leaks um, before I back it down off the ramp. Okay, so let's go ahead and wiggle our way around. Very tight quarters out here in my garage. And let's hop in and start the engine. All right, foot on the brake. All right, so underneath here, I got no signs of oil leaking here, so that's perfect. Let's take a look at the drain plug. That looks good as well, no leaks, so we are good to go here. You other Lexus owners, that tick sound that you hear, is that just direct injection? Let me know, the, the engine sounds like it ticks more than it should, but it does always run properly with no issue. So let me know what you guys have to say in the comments down below, please. Go ahead and reattach the undercover. Alright guys, I'm going to come over here and check the dipstick, kind of see what our level is at. So pull it out, give it a nice wipe. We're 
pretty darn close here. So I'm going to put a little bit more just to top it off, but it's uh, pretty much almost to the fill line there. After changing the oil, I just wanted to go for a quick test drive and the car feels super smooth, the acceleration's good, new intake filters in and thermostats in and new tires are on, four wheel alignment's done, car is, you know, being maintained and ready to drive for a while again. Just need to know how to reset the oil light on the inside of the car. I'll have a second video just going over all those steps as well. This video helped you if you guys uh, found anything useful out of this. Hopefully you guys can change the oil yourself. It's very simple to do as long as you have a couple of uh, basic tools and save yourself, you know, 300 bucks. You can do it yourself at home for 70, including all the tools that you'll need. We're all done with our oil change on the 2007 Lexus IS250. This is with the 2.5 liter. The 3.5 liter is the same process. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me the thumbs up. Like I said, leave me some comments down below. Let me know uh, kind of what you thought about the video. And also with the lifter, is that like a lifter? Not lifter tick, but uh, uh, the direct injection sound of the 2.5 liter. Sylvie, it's just sitting outside in the street while I'm working in the garage. It's uh, super frozen. I just took the uh, IS250 to discount tire and put some brand new all season tires on it because this thing's rear wheel drive and I had absolutely no traction. I almost got stuck in the street just on flat surface with ice. Guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. I will see you on the next video. Have a good one.